guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would film a video called First-ish Impressions and basically this is like my version of one of those reviews that people are like it's really just a first impression but they review the palette and I just thought this would be kind of helpful for you guys if you just want to know some of my initial impressions after trying palettes out a few times. Sometimes I can really tell if I'm gonna like a palette after trying them a few times. Sometimes the shades don't all appeal to me so I use the shades I like and I'm one of those people that I'm always like conflicted because I feel like I should use a palette pretty thoroughly before I do like a review video you know and I'm buying way more eyeshadow palettes now so I feel like I have so many and then what happens is I'll film a look on my channel kind of do a first impression, get ready with me, and then you'll never see the palette again. So I don't know what to call this because it's not really a review, it's not really a first impressions, so I thought I'd call it like a first-ish impressions, and hopefully you guys will find this helpful. Definitely leave me feedback down in the comments if you have any other ideas for names. I think I'm going to make this into a series. I am on a no buy currently for the month of May, so I won't be buying any new makeup and I will definitely be doing reviews, like full reviews, on some of the products in this video. Some of them I'm already kind of over after trying them a few times, so I'm definitely going to do reviews on the palettes I really love. Some of them you might not see again, but we'll see how it goes. And without further blabbering, let's get into it. So the first palette I want to talk about is this guy. Now this palette, I actually have tried the Glamlight Masterpiece palette, I think it's called. And I thought they had a decent formula, but Glamlight was definitely one of those brands that didn't really have a lot of clout on the internet for a long, long time. And then I think they started doing more PR and they did a few collabs. So they had a couple more palettes. I still wasn't really interested in picking anything up. And then they decided to do the pizza palette. And and I think Jeffree Star reviewed it and I think it kind of went viral and a lot of people I know bought the pizza palette. It wasn't really my scene because it looked like there was a lot of extra unused space in that palette and I knew just like storing it was going to be a nightmare and all these things so I stayed away from it and then they sneak peek the burger palette and the taco palette and I was like I am not going to want the burger palette, but the taco palette really piqued my interest. But when I saw the inside of the burger palette, it really drew me in because of all the cool green shades in this palette. There's only four, but they are quite stunning. And I have really been enjoying playing with this palette. As you can see, I've really digged into blue cheese as well as a thousand islands. Those two shimmer shades are gorgeous. And I really like the shade tomatoes. It's like a beautiful coral. I pretty much use all the shades in this palette except caramelized onion, sweet potato fries, mustard, onion rings, like I've used all the greens and the corals and the reds. So that's why I'm not ready to do like a full-blown review on this palette. But so far, I've really, really been enjoying it. Other than the kind of cumbersome packaging situation, the eyeshadows themselves are really, really nice. And I honestly feel like dealing with the packaging is worth it for me because the palette performs really, really well. This shade is very squishy, as you can see. I can, if I like poke it, it'll like move around. It's very wet, um, but that just makes it easy to apply on my lids, personally, in my opinion. The mattes are really pigmented, and so what I can do is go ahead and actually swatch this because I haven't really done a swatch party with this for you guys. I swatched it on Instagram. I believe. But let's go ahead and swatch it. I wasn't planning on doing swatches, but now that I'm talking about it, I'm interested in showing you guys. So I have, so I have, sorry, I have pickles, mustard, bacon, and sweet potato fries. There they are. Super pigmented. Okay, here's the next row. I have tomatoes, a thousand islands, caramelized onions, and cheddar. Here is that row. Okay, next we have blue cheese, avocado, red onions, and onion rings. Here's that row. And then here is the final row. We have lettuce, spinach, ketchup, and barbecue sauce. So here is all of the swatches from the burger palette. And honestly, these shades are like right up my alley. Like I said, I love greens. This shade spinach, I have not used that one actually on my eyes yet. What's wrong with me? I will though because so, so beautiful. And honestly, if you've been thinking about buying this one, I would recommend it. I did go ahead and 
pre-order the taco palette. I wasn't going to, but they sent me a $5 off coupon with the burger palette, so I decided to take advantage and pick it up because I really liked the burger palette. So that is like my first-ish impressions on the Glam Light Burger Palette. Okay guys, the next thing I wanna give you guys a first-ish impressions of is the Sydney Grace Danny Bundle. Now they came out with this as a dupe or I don't know what, what you call this exactly, but basically there was a Australian makeup brand, I can't remember their name, on April Fool's Day they teased a palette called the Pickle Palette and it was supposed to be pickle inspired and pickle scented and yeah, pickle scented, and obviously it was like a April Fool's joke, and they didn't actually end up creating the palette. And so, you know, Sydney Grace, being the wonderful company that they are, they did, they did their own dupe of that particular palette and emulated the shades. So this one is called the Danny's Bundle, and it's named after um, the owner's mom because she likes greens. And so yeah, here it is, and I really, really have enjoyed playing with this. As you can see, I've definitely used this Again, it's just that I haven't used every shade, so I don't feel like I'm ready to give you guys a review, but these are beautiful, and I wanna go ahead and swatch these for you because I have not swatched them on my channel yet, so really, really wanna um, swatch them for you guys, and I believe these are in stock still, or back in stock, because I believe it did sell out the first time, but you guys know I love Sydney Grace's formula, and honestly, I just kinda jumped at the opportunity to buy more green shades from them. So let me go ahead and swatch. I'm just gonna put the names of the shadows on the screen as I swatch them because I don't wanna pull the pans up right now because I feel like I'm gonna make a mess otherwise. First, I'm gonna swatch the first three shades. I have these organized the way I would. I don't think there is particularly a way to do it. You know, you can do it however you want. So I pick these three as the first row and I will put the names on the screen. Uh, six mattes and three shimmers in this bundle, by the way, in case you guys were curious. Here's the next row. Ooh, I love this green, and this shimmer green is beautiful too. I've worn those on my eyes for sure. And then I'm gonna swatch the last row. Here they are. Oh, look at that metallic green shade. It's so freaking stunning and I will put the names of the shadows on the screen now for you guys so yeah I really like it if you get a chance to try them out I definitely would and also there's quite a few smaller youtubers that have codes with Sydney Grace so definitely use one of those codes to save some money and I know they'll have a sale coming up in July I think they do Christmas in July but yeah I'm obsessed I'm obsessed would totally recommend to you guys to check them out okay so the next palette I want to talk to you guys about in this video is the Game of Thrones palette by Urban Decay I wasn't planning on picking this up but I ended up watching season 8 episode 3 at um, my father-in-law's house and then I was like oh wait this is launching on Sephora let me pick it up real quick because it was during the sale so I decided to buy it and I'm sure you guys have seen this a million times but the show is so good that I feel like if I didn't buy this I would feel like FOMO once it got you know discontinued or whatever so I plan on just holding on to this as a collector's item as well to be honest and then here are the shadows I don't know if you can see this from the camera but I have tapped into this again I just haven't used all of the shades so I don't feel comfortable doing a full-blown review on this but if you like Game of Thrones even a little bit I would say pick this guy up because you're gonna feel pretty bummed when it's gone and you can't get it anymore. <laughs> so that's kind of my reasoning for getting it and this is the section that's called, uh, I don't even know, Take the Black, White Walker, Frozen North, Free Fork, and Hard Home. I have to swatch still. Let me swatch that. So there's like a special shade situation. I don't know exactly why they did the different pans. Like the fifth pan is a circular pan. I don't know why they did that. Um, but 
These shadows actually, from the few times I have used them, perform really, really well. There are a lot of really neutral matte shades in here. So for me, it makes it pretty easy to create a look. I do wish they had done some colorful mattes just so you had some things to like blend like the blue and the greens with, but for the most part, you can do a pretty neutral crease and then have a pop of color on the lid with this palette. So pretty easy to use um, palette, nothing too crazy. I don't know, other than the fact that if you're a great Game of Thrones fan, I don't really see anyone like running out to get this palette, but I feel like I'm usually into like the fantasy stuff, so I don't mind having this. So here is uh, Nymeria, we have Winter is Here, um, Weirwood Leaves, uh, The Sight, and then Winterfell. So that is the next section. And then we have the third section. Here are the finger swatches. Ooh, that swatch beautifully. So here is the next row. We have Red Keep, which is that copper shade. Um, Castly, Casterly Rock, House Lannister, Lannister Red, and then King's Landing is that butter yellow shade. Okay, now I'm gonna swatch the last section, and this is like the House of Targaryen colors, I believe. Here they are. These colors are definitely more like fantasy type colors compared to a lot of the other colors in the palette. Um, so it's nice to see Urban Decay do some kind of different shades down there on the bottom. They're swatching kind of light, but usually with the glitter glue, I can get these to work pretty well. This is one of the first Urban Decay palettes that I've had in a long time that I have a little bit of hope in. I feel like they could have definitely done a whole lot better. I know a lot of people wish the palette was less chunky and stuff like that, which I get. And some people kind of wish that they had just done small palettes so people could just like buy one or two, which would have been nice. But overall, I feel like, you know, The Game of Thrones is a very iconic TV show as well as, you know, a novel. And I think it kind of deserved its like makeup moment. So even though you know, if this was just like their summer palette, I wouldn't have been attracted to it. I think that since it's like a whole collection based on a show and a book, I think they did pretty good for this. Okay guys, the next palette I want to talk to you guys about ColourPop palettes that I haven't really reviewed yet. This is the new Makeup Shayla palette with ColourPop and I don't know why my first instinct was to not buy this, but uh, then I bought it anyway, so this is why, things like this is why I need to go on a no-buy so I can learn to be less savage. So I kind of, like straight off the bat, I do regret buying this right away because I know if I had just waited, I could have probably scored this on sale, but I'm so like ridiculously impatient that I just bought it anyway. And the colors in here are so, so basic. I feel like, you know, you're only really gonna need this if you are like a beginner because honestly, we all have these colors in our collection. So here is the first row. We have Proceed, we have Maintenance and Dead End. And I honestly think like, I like the Nine Pan palettes from uh, ColourPop, but this one is just like not even like one of the best of the nine pan palettes. I feel like it's just like very okay. The colors, you know, I like the brown sugar palette that they did and that's a basic neutral palette, but those basic neutrals are formulated well, very creamy. These ones are definitely more dry and this like yellow, I mean, it looks pigmented when I swatch it here, but honestly, if you try to blend that thing, it just like blends right into my skin tone. So the orange shade is called Warning. Then we have Hazard and Caution. And then I'm going to swatch the last three shades. Yeah, this is definitely one of those palettes that I probably won't go back and review. Like, it's kind of pointless. It's just like very meh. Really wish they hadn't put a sparkly black or like a black at all in this palette. I feel like we already have blacks in our collection. Like we don't need a shimmer black. And then uh, Drill is a beautiful color. So we have Drill, Culture, and Gloves On. Uh, Drill is beautiful. That swatch, nice and pigmented. But the shades Warning and Hazard were very 
chunky and dry feeling. So that's kind of disappointing and that's kind of my first-ish impressions on the ColourPop X Shayla Proceed with Caution palette. If you've been thinking about buying it, I advise you to proceed with caution. Okay guys, the next palette I want to talk about and give you guys a first-ish impressions of is the Jeffree Star Blue Blood palette. Now, when I first got this guy, I was really interested in playing with it, but as per usual, something else came along and I got distracted and sidetracked. So I have not used every single shade in this palette. The ones I have used that I've really enjoyed are definitely the blues. The neutral shades don't really excite me. The shade Entitled is gorgeous. I really enjoyed wearing that. And Flourishing, Blue Monday, uh, Deceased, all really fun colors. I don't really love the paler blues. Um, the mid-range blues are the ones that really work with my skin tone. So happy to have that. The packaging is definitely, you know... A standout it's very bulky and you know you're not gonna have a hard time finding this in your makeup collection if you have a ton of palettes um, the reason I've been holding off on really digging into this and reviewing it is because I based off of just my skill and experience feel like if you're a beginner in makeup you don't want to go for this palette it's a lot of work uh, you don't want to blend it if you want a pigmented look and if you do try to blend it, you're gonna lose a lot of the pigmentation. So that would be like really all I have to say about it. It's a good palette, um, but if I knew then what I know now, I probably wouldn't have bought this. Um, I'm not gonna return it though. I'm gonna keep it in my collection um, and keep playing with it and enjoy it as much as possible. It's really not one of my favorites and I'm not gonna swatch this because I've already swatched this in a swatch party video. So I will try and remember to link up link that up in the cards for you guys. Okay guys, and the last palette, I was gonna do more palettes, but I always do overly long videos, so I'm just gonna do one more palette and keep it short and sweet. And I will definitely do more videos like this if you guys like them. They're called first-ish impressions. Um, so they're not really a first impression, they're not really a review. Kind of the in-between where, where I'm testing the palettes out still. So the next one I want to talk to you guys about is the Natasha Denona Biba palette. This is an interesting purchase because I really wasn't planning on buying this when it first came out. I thought it was a total snooze fest, but I had a hundred dollar Sephora reward and I didn't know what to buy with it. I was thinking like, do I purchase essentials or do I use a hundred dollars towards something I wouldn't necessarily like want to pay full price for. And so that's what I decided to go with. If I hadn't already owned all the Pat McGrath palettes, I would have definitely gone for one of the bigger Pat McGrath palettes, uh, but instead I decided to go with the Biba palette, and I honestly am very happy with my decision. Um, it's a nice big mirror and great range of neutrals, so I'm so happy with this, and I feel like Natasha Denona has definitely worked on her formula, um, so kudos to her for that and I just feel like this is just going to be a great palette for my collection um, for the years to come I can see myself you know if I even stop like doing YouTube someday I still see myself reaching for this guy because it's a great worker palette in my collection also if I do like bridles or prom makeup I can definitely see myself dipping into this palette so the first row we have rustic we have a uh, prairie Coco, Freckle, and Shine. And then here are the shades from the next row. Okay, so here is Pasha, Monroe, Rayon, Buff, and Tone. And then here is the last row. And here is the last row, and that's Seed, Tar, Sculpture, Spot, and Tusk. So yeah, super neutral. I have used this palette a few times and really enjoyed it. It doesn't really like pack a whole lot of punch, but it's beautiful. Like I said, it's a worker palette. If I stop doing YouTube, I'm not gonna always be wearing like crazy red eyeshadow, you know? I'll probably <laughs> try and do some more neutral looks or if I, you know, get sick of the colorful looks, I think that'll still be a good staple palette in my collection. So yeah, I really am happy with that purchase. The black isn't like overly pigmented or anything and these two gray shades, not really my vibe, but everything else I can totally see myself throwing in the crease or, you know, if I need to do a quick makeup look on myself or somebody else, I will totally grab for that palette. 
Okay guys, that is everything for my first-ish impressions video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think of this idea down in the comments below. And let me know what palettes in this video that you would like to see full-blown reviews of. I am always open to hearing from you guys. So definitely let me know. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next one soon. Bye guys.